Inflammatory bowel disease actually on the rise in North America, and some experts believe improved sanitation and hygiene may play a role. That theory is leading some patients to get, we might say, down and dirty with a parasite. Dr. Kim Mulvihill explains. Eating worms. It's the stuff of legends. In the classic How to Eat Fried Worms, Billy accepts a dare to eat 10 worms in the course of one day. But it's no longer kids, and it's no longer creepy crawlers. More and more adults are trying worms not as a dare, but as a treatment for life-threatening diseases. Why not? We had nothing to lose. People like musician Scott Richards, who hit rock bottom with an inflammatory bowel disease called Crohn's. It's uh, serious pain, excruciating pain. Or Deborah Wade, also diagnosed with Crohn's. The disease causes intestines to swell and empty frequently. You'd go to the bathroom and the toilet would be filled with blood. And the pain would be so severe that I would just be sobbing. Gastroenterologist Dr. Jonathan Turdeman of UCSF has treated Scott and Deborah for years. He says Crohn's is a destructive immune disorder. Your body's immune system is overreactive or hyperreactive to things in the environment, most importantly to bacteria that are in your bowel. And you have a reaction that ultimately damages the bowel. There's no cure for Crohn's. Medications can keep things at bay, but can have serious side effects or even stop working. You get to the point that there's nothing to do to help you. There's no one, you know, there's no medicine left that works. And all you have to do is just suffer. Scott and Deborah felt hopeless until hookworms came into their lives. The parasite is common in undeveloped countries, places where inflammatory bowel disease is rare. In the U.S., thanks to advances in sanitation, hookworms are rare, but immune disorders are on the rise. Is there a connection? As we have made things more hygienic, we may in fact be precipitating an outbreak or, a, or an increase in the frequency of these immune disorders. Studies suggest the presence of hookworms in the human gut may be beneficial, secreting a chemical that turns off an overactive immune response. To fight their disease, Scott and Deborah signed up to get infected with the parasites. Scott went to Mexico. I tell people what you're being is a pioneer. Where he met this man, Garen Aglietti. You're going off the medical grid. Most doctors have no idea. They've never seen a hookworm. Aglietti calls himself a gastrointestinal ecologist. He takes clients like Scott across the border where he gives them a Band-Aid to put on their arm. On the Band-Aid, hookworm larvae. Um, you just experience maybe some itching, which is basically the larva making their way into your bloodstream. Um, and you felt that? Felt it. Definitely feel it. It's Creepy, just, crawly. It feels like somebody burrowing into your, your veins, but no pain. Hookworms then travel from blood to your lungs, where... Well, you cough them up into your throat and you swallow them. And they go back into your intestines and that's where they start to mature. It's a human parasite. And so once you get infected and they, and they latch on, you don't have to do anything. Deborah found what she needed in Santa Cruz. We guarantee that you will be infected for three years if you use hookworm. Where helminthic therapist Jasper Lawrence helped her get infected. The cost, $3,900. The biggest risk attached to hookworm is financial. You know, there is a slight chance it might not work for you. Hookworm farmers say the parasites can live inside a human for at least five years. Scott and Deborah didn't have to wait long to feel relief. Uh, I started waking up. Pain was gone. It was this, this sudden. We had Thai food last night. I was fine. I mean, I'm, being, I'm eating things that I wouldn't, I, I thought I wouldn't be able to eat forever. While the therapy is not regulated by the FDA, Dr. Turdeman admits he's an interested observer in all this. It's very interesting. It's not a therapy that I can officially endorse or condone. Um, but at the same time, there is a growing uh, body of science that suggests that this makes some sense. It's not a crazy... Uh, idea. And while some believe the therapy may help a whole host of immunological diseases, including asthma, allergies, even multiple sclerosis, the hard evidence is lacking. The options we have are just so pitiful. And when millions are spent for those options and then 
not put any money into this kind of research. I mean, it's just, I'm not just frustrated. I mean, I'm extremely angry. Dr. Kim Mulvihill, CBS 5, Health Watch.